Hi everybody, my name is Andrea and I'm the potter who normally teaches at the Island Art Centre. But as the Art Centre is closed at the minute, you're joining me in my pottery studio and turning your home into a pottery studio too. So today what we're going to be making is a little flower wall planter. Okay. Um, hopefully in your um, information, you'll have been told to maybe have a little damp cloth at hand. This is really, really handy. And also to have a hairdryer at hand. Okay, so these things you're going to need. You're also going to need a little bit of water. So um, what I tend to do is when I unpack my crate, I can take these little colours out. And the two colours that we're going to be using today are white and yellow. And we'll talk about those in a little while. I have this little container left over. I normally put a little bit of water in that, not loads, because we don't want it spilling. We really only need a little bit. Okay, so there's my water ready. I've got my cloth. I've got my hair dryer. And in my clay crate, I'll have a board. I have that in front of me. And you'll have two sticks. Okay, these sticks are guides and they sit on your wooden board. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if I just tilt down, you'll see that they sit quite far apart so that my rolling pin rests on them. They're still sitting on the board and I never extend the rolling pin beyond the board because these little sticks are a little bit long and they could flip up if you go beyond the board. Okay, so you'll notice that they are either side of the rolling pin and they stop the rolling pin going down too far and squashing your clay so that it's paper thin. Okay, if it's paper thin, it's going to stick to your board. It's going to be a bit useless for us today. The guides are the perfect thickness for the clay that we're going to be using today. Okay, so what we're ready for is our clay. So it's in your clay crate in a plastic bag. Okay, um, I'm just going to open it up and you're going to find that it is going to be a little bit wet because it's been sitting in the bag a little while and clay has a lot of water in it that always rises to the surface when it's in a plastic bag. So it may seem a little bit sticky, it's sticking to my hands a little bit and it looks a little bit watery. So you really want to get rid of that and you can just tap it in your hands because your hands are nice and warm and they will dry up the water. If it leaves your hands really sticky, that's when our cloth comes in handy and you can just wipe that stickiness away. If you'd rather use the board, you can roll it around the board and you'll see that it'll leave a little track of water behind. Can you see? And so the board is absorbing some of the water. So we're either evaporating it with the warmth of our hands or letting it absorb into the, the wood of the, the board. Okay, so I'm gonna roll it around a little bit more and I'm always trying to keep that rounded shape. The clay has no air bubbles in it and we want to keep it that way. If we smush it and squish it around, we'll introduce air bubbles into it, okay? And they will, when heated in my kiln, and my kiln's just here, this is my potter's oven, when I heat your lovely pieces of pottery up, the water inside those air bubbles can turn to steam and it just wants to jet out and it takes part of your pottery with it. So we always are being very careful not to smush and squish our clay because we'll trap air in there. Okay, I have left my board pretty wet so I think my clay is ready to go okay in your clay crate you'll have one of these circles okay this is the shape that we're going to be cutting today for our wall planter okay and if you if you just watch me as I lift it and bend it slightly this is the shape that we're going to be ending up with okay so you see this is the shape that we must cut so when we're rolling out our clay we must get enough clay to make this lovely circle now there's ways of doing that, okay, and it's basically constantly lifting and turning your clay slightly so that you don't overstretch your clay in one direction so that it becomes a long strip. If you keep turning it, you stretch it in one direction, turn it, stretch it in the other, and that will make your clay become circular, okay. You'll notice it when you're rolling, okay. So what we want to do is we want to flatten it down a little bit. So I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to pat it down first. And I'm going to see if that's wanted to stick. Can you see how much my um, clay has wanted to stick to the board? It's stuck so much that it's lifting the entire board up. So we're going to carefully peel that away. Okay. I'm going to give it a little turn. So it was in this direction. And I'm going to give it a little turn. And I'm going to give it another little pat. Hopefully our clay is starting to lose a little bit of the surface water even more, but it might still want to stick a bit more. There we go. It's really stuck. So up it gets lifted and we turn it around again. Okay, I'm going to give it another little tap. 
my board's getting pretty wet, so it's still going to want to stick a little bit. And I'm going to give it another little turn. Okay, so we should be getting a nice thick circle. So with that turning, you can see that we've got this circle. So if when we're using a rolling pin, we continue to turn it, we're still going to end up with a circle, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to use my rolling pin now, but remember, it's not a race. If we do it too quickly, we're going to get that long strip that we want to avoid. Okay, so when I start rolling, I always put my rolling pin in the middle and give it a little push out to the edges. Okay, so I'll just push out one edge, back to the middle and push out to the other edge. Okay, that's loads of rolling and I'm still loads away from my guide. So I've still lots of squashing through with my clay. So I'm going to lift it and it's really going to want to stick because that's a lot of pressure with a rolling pin and give it a turn. Okay, so it was rolling this direction and then I just turned it back into the middle again, give it a little roll out. Back to the middle, a little roll out again, and lift and turn again. So up I go and turn it around. And up we go. So you can see I'm really taking my time. I'm not pushing too hard with that rolling pin. Just taking my time and doing it right. This way you always have a lovely even piece of clay. You won't have big, big dents in it. Sometimes when we push too hard, we leave a big dent and then we create this big wave in the clay, which can sometimes create air bubbles or trap little air bubbles. So I'm going to lift. I'm going to turn now. It's getting quite big. I want about a mini pizza at this stage. Roll it out. Okay. Now, as it gets bigger, it's going to get a little bit wobblier. So take your time with the lifting. And as long as you're lifting it as regularly as I'm lifting it, it won't have stuck to the board. It's when we continue to roll and roll and roll and we don't lift it. We don't break the seal, okay? So the water is, is sealing the clay slightly, but if you lift it, you break that. It still wants to do it every time, but as long as we lift it and break that seal, you'll be fine. Let's see if we're nearly there. Okay, I'm not quite down at my guides just yet. I'm not, not far off it. We need a little bit more to go. So this is a good time to see, is my circle fitting? Okay, so I'm nearly there, okay? You can see I've got a little bit of clay here, but and I'm okay up here. I've still a little bit more to go down there. Okay, so I'm nearly there. So I'm just going to release that. Really taking my time with the last little bit in case I don't get my lovely circle. Back to the edge and back again. And lift. Look how big we are now. This is just perfect. It's so close. I think I, I am there, I really do. So to check, I'm just gonna push one more time in the middle, good rock and roll, and then roll out to the edges. And if you see any movement in the clay, that's the last bit of, of clay movement you should see. Okay, so my rolling pin is rolling now on the guys, I can see it. You need to get down at eye level and have a little look, you can see, okay? Now, it doesn't matter if you're slightly short of your circle. We have still a little bit of pattern to put on this before we cut. And what you'll find is it'll squash it out a little bit more. So if you can see, I'm lifting it by the edges, okay? And just giving a little turn. I wanna break that seal one last time. And if you find that your board is really just so wet and sticky, you can lift it and turn it over. Now you've got a nice dry side, okay? So I'm always lifting from the edges. I'm never putting my hand in the middle of it because it just it puts little dents in the middle and can stretch it and sometimes even break it, okay? So I'm gonna check and see. So this is the non-absorbent side. This is the dull side. And this template, it is brown. In your template, it might be um, a different pattern, but you'll feel that one side should feel dry Okay, it leaves you brown or gray. And the other side it feels glossy, it either white or, or have a printed thing on it. Okay, so you should feel and feel which one is the one that's not going to stick to the clay. So if it's not shiny, it's not going to stick to the clay. If it's shiny, we don't want that touching the clay. So if I set this on, you can see I have I have loads of clay around. Okay, but it doesn't matter if yours was maybe a little bit longer and you missed a bit, because now we're going to put a pattern on it before we cut that circle. Okay, and the pattern will push it out a little bit more. Okay, and thin it down a little, so it'll stretch it out so that you've got the perfect um, circle size in the end. If you want to, and if it fits, you can use the bottom of one of your paint brushes from your clay crate and you can lightly draw around. This just gives you an indication of where your pattern's gonna go, but it's not cutting, okay? It's just generally, I'm just using the rounded end and I'm just leaning against the cardboard 
and I'm just drawing around lightly. Okay, so you can see it's just a little mark that I've put on. I'm going to lift this off so you can see. Okay, it's just a little indentation and it sometimes helps to see where you want to put your pattern on the circle that we're going to cut. Okay, but bear in mind that these things are going to squash out a little bit still, which is why we don't cut the circle at this stage. Okay, so for our patterns, we have got in our clay crate some lace, okay, this little felted lace coaster, and we have a little pen top that has a little flower on the end or creates a little flower when pressed in. So these things are going to be pressed into the clay to create our lovely pattern, okay? So in this little planter, I've used a lot of pressing in this felted flower coaster, okay? In this little planter, I've used more of the lace pressed in, but you can combine those, okay? I want you to make your own unique piece. When I wrap them, okay, this is, imagine this is the circle that we're gonna end up cutting. Do you remember I showed you that I'm going to lift it? I'm gonna fold one bit over and one bit over like this, okay? This bit and this bit are the ones that have a lot of pattern on them. You don't actually see this bit, okay? But if you can see that, if you can concentrate on this, the fact that this is white and this is white, these are the bits that are seen, but this bit is not. So if I open that up, you'll see that it's actually just this section that we need to pattern and this section that we need to pattern. If you wanna pattern the whole thing, that's fine. But what I'm saying is that this bit will be seen and this bit will be seen. So if we can concentrate on our clay circle, it will be this bit that will be seen and this bit that will be seen. Okay, so you don't need to worry too much about here because this is the perfect place for your name, okay? So if I want to combine those, I could do a little bit of this, just set on, okay? So I'm setting this on, and now I'm gonna press it in. First off, I'm gonna press it in with my hand, and that'll push in a little bit, okay? But the rolling pin lightly rolled over it will push it in more. Now remember, we're not using guides, okay? So we have to be careful with our rolling pin that doesn't go too far. Okay, so I'm just setting on top and giving a little roll in. Okay, but that one's gonna put a pattern there, but maybe I'd like a little bit of this. So what I'm trying to do with this one is combine both of the techniques that I've shown you in my examples. So I'm gonna put this bit of lace down like that. I'm gonna pad it in lightly with my hand. I don't need to do this overlapping bit, okay? I've already rolled this in and I'm just gonna roll this bit in. Okay, now we'll see what they look like. Okay, so I'm going to peel this one off. Hopefully you'll get a good look and see. And all of that lovely pattern has been impressed or printed onto the clay. Let's try this one. Okay, so we've got this combination of patterns, this technique and this technique, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. When you're rolling, remember, you only want to roll on one side. You don't want to roll on this side or you will smush it again, okay? So I'm going to do exactly the same thing or you could do the opposite if you fancy doing the opposite. Shall we try the opposite? So I'm gonna set this one in here. Remember, we're gonna press it in first with our fingers and then lightly roll. Going over that bit a bit, but that should be fine. Okay, just lightly roll, you've pressed in. You can see the clay tries to like lift a little bit in the spaces, sort of squishing through, but not entirely, okay? And then this bit, we'll just set here. So it is up to you how you want to put your patterns in, okay? So I'm gonna roll mine again. Again, I'm gonna be very mindful that I'm not going to squash this side or I have a really, really crisp side and then a really smudged side. I'm gonna turn my board so that I know I'm only just rolling here. Remember, I'm not gonna roll this bit in here because then I'll ruin that bit. Okay, so I kind of stop. Okay, let's reveal that pattern, see if I've done a good job. Okay, that's not too bad, is it? Okay, so remember this middle bit's not really important, but if you have a pattern on it, it's absolutely fine, okay? I'm happy enough for you to play with these, okay? Um, in different ways, maybe you only want a little tiny corner of this and you want a bit of lace here and a bit of lace here, so it is entirely up to you, okay? Or if you just want one, one you can just use that and just keep lifting it and printing it in different places. 
But when you're finished, you should have a bit of a pattern on your clay and there will be a bit of a space. OK, or the center, at least, will be the bit that we writing will be writing our name on. OK, a lot of pressing has happened on this clay. So remember that when we press the clay against the board, it wants to stick. So what I want to do is I just want to lift up. And release now it's really huge and I really don't want it to um, to stretch or put my fingers through it. So I'm just going to lift up one bit and then lift up the other bit. OK, that's just breaking the uh, the water seal that we talked about before. OK, so it's now definitely time to cut that circle out. You'll see that sometimes your edges have got a little bit smudged. You know, those ones that we drew with the, um, the bottom of the paintbrush. So I'm going to just sort of place this on and kind of work it out. I try to keep to the bits of the circle that I can see. But really, you know, this was just a guide to see where your circle will be eventually cut, because all these bits are not important for the, um, the actual wrap of the clay, but they're super important for all these little bits that we're going to be adding on. So once we cut those bits, don't get smushed up. Remember what I said, we don't smush clay up. We're going to keep those bits flat. OK, so we're ready to cut it out. The absorbent side that we talked about, the brown or the grey side, is now touching the um, clay. I'm going to pop my stick in. OK, so you'll notice this little stick has a pointy end, that's going to become our knife for, for this part of our workshop, OK? And we just put the pointy bit end into the clay so that it's standing upright and it's touching the, the board, OK? So it's actually gone all the way through and it's touching the board. If we set it in a little bit, I'm going to try and set it in just a little bit and it won't. Well, look, it just wants to stand no matter what. But if I give it a good push down, I know it's definitely stuck. I kind of anticipated that if I put it in, it'll fall over. But even the tiniest little bit when it sticks, but we're going to put it in all the way. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw around leaning that little stick against the cardboard and cutting out while we're drawing because we're drawing all the way through the clay. I'm going to hold the stick at the bottom because if I hold it in the middle, it's a bit of a bendy stick and they do break. So I'm going to hold it at the bottom and I'm going to draw around. OK, so it's like I'm leaning against this circle and I'm just pulling it around. OK, so I'm just pulling it. I don't need to cut as if I'm cutting bread. I just need to pull. OK, so I'm pulling it around I'm about halfway. So I'm going to turn this around so you can see. OK, I'm going to continue on holding it quite close to the bottom. And I'm really taking my time. I want this to be cut well. So I'm sure that it's leaning against the um, against the board. OK, it's leaning. This little stick is touching that board. It's definitely leaning against the template as well. Okay, this little hand is just making sure that the circle doesn't wobble a bit. Okay, and I'm so close to the end, all the way around to the beginning again. Okay, and that's it nice and loose. I'm just going to cut out to the edge. And these bits, like I said, are really important for later on. Okay, so I'm going to cut them up a bit. Those four bits should be enough, and then just going to sit on top of each other to keep themselves nice and damp. You can put that back into your plastic bag if you want, or you can place it on the bag and fold it over. This just keeps it and keep it away from um, the hair dryer. Okay, we want that clay to stay nice and damp. Okay, so we're going to take off this bit and reveal our beautiful circle. Okay, if you had little rough bits around, you can always go back and trim them. But I always say, keep your circle in place if you're doing any trimming. Okay. So that you don't end up taking maybe a bit away that's not quite circle. Sometimes when we're trimming without this support, this little circular template, we cut into the circle shape and we don't like that. Okay. So if you need to, you can keep that on, just tidy up little bits. That maybe we're a bit raggedy. Okay. So let's put our name on this. Okay. Let's claim this. So this middle bit for me is the perfect place for me to put my name. And I'm going to draw with this stick. Now we know that this stick can be a cutter. So we need to be careful that we don't draw like that because we know that's the drawing motion for this stick. But if we lean it on its side, it's not, we're not allowing this little pointy bit to dig into the clay too much. We're using more of the side of the stick. So it is very much like the side of a pencil. And you're just going to write your name nice and big so that I can get this right back to you. Okay, so I'm going to take my time. Writing on clay is not easy especially if you're being so careful that you're not cutting all the way through. So if you're 
wobbling a bit and you think I actually need somebody else to do this for me and get somebody there who's maybe got a slightly bigger hand and can lean on the board a little bit because I find that very handy when my hand can lean on the board but if you've got a smaller hand and you're leaning on the clay and it's wobbling around and you're afraid of messing up your pattern you might uh, prefer that a pair of bigger hands helps so there's my name nice and big and clear okay so I'm going to make I'm looking at my pattern and I'm thinking I'm going to make this the top okay so I want that to be the top I think Okay, and so what I'm going to do with my stick is I'm going to use this a blunt end. Okay, so we've used the pointy end, now we're going to go for this, this bit. Okay, I've decided that this plain bit at the top is going to be my top. Okay, so these are going to be my sides. And what I'm going to do, now remember this is the back of it, I'm going to start making the hole. Okay, I want the hole to be away from the edge. If I put it too close to the edge, it can crack. Okay, so if you can see with this one, the hole is clearly quite far away from the edge. Okay, if it's really close, say somewhere about here, this little bridge between it, the hole and the edge of the, the clay, that can crack. Okay, so this one's a much, much bigger hole. Okay, and I'm going to, I'm going to fear for this bigger hole for today. Okay, so using the blunt end of the stick, keeping quite far away from the edge. Okay, so about that much. I'm going to stick the stick in and give it a wiggle around. Okay, so I'm almost big, drawing a bigger circle. That's going to be the hanging hole. Okay, so we put our name on it, we put our hole in it, we put our pattern on it. All right, now we're going to need to turn it over. Again, if you've got a pair of big hands there, this is perfect so that they can carefully lift up and turn over. Okay, here's the top of my planter. Okay. Now in your crate, you will find a really large sponge. This is going to be the support because we're going to do that wrapping of the clay. And what happens if you wrap the clay and don't have a support, it can collapse and break on the edges. So when I wrap the clay, this bit and this bit can crack because this bit just collapses if it doesn't have a support, okay? Because you can see this is a really big curve um, that the clay is holding. But if there is a sponge in there, then it leans against the sponge and it doesn't have to support itself, okay? And it won't get weak here. Okay, so my sponge is ready for my wrap, okay? I'm gonna place my sponge right there. So there's the hole, okay, you can see where the hole is. There's my sponge support. And you'll notice when I do my wrap, I always leave a drainage hole at the bottom, okay? So I don't need that to close up. Okay, I'm ready to show you the lifting. OK, so I've shown you with the cardboard several times so you understand that we're going to lift this bit here and we're going to fold it over and we're going to fold this bit over and create almost like a, a, a Mexican wrap. OK, so let's see if we can do that in the clay. If you want to watch first, you can. Well, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soften that edge first with my finger. OK, it looks a bit hard edged, I'll maybe dampen my finger actually. Damp on my finger with my cloth and then just going to soften that hard edge. It looked really, really um, flat. And what I'm trying to do is make maybe make it a little bit more natural. So I'm not pushing really, really hard against it. I'm just dampening my finger so that it glides over the top and takes the cut edge look off it. Okay, now I'm ready to lift my clay. So I'm going to take this edge, it's nice and slippery now, and I'm going to try wrapping it over. Okay, so it's kind of a pointy bit at the bottom. And it's much more open at the top. I'm going to lift that up so you can see. Okay, and then this bit, this is the pointy bit here. Okay, and I'm going to curve this bit over. Okay, so there's the opening. And there's the wrap effect. Okay, so this bit and this bit are going to want to join for forever. Okay, so I'm going to teach you a cross hatching effect. So there's my middle point. So you always make sure that this is in the middle. Okay, that's where the hole helps. We're going to do a cross hatching effect and it's just like our cutting. Okay, we're going to take our stick. Now, obviously, you will keep your board nice and flat. I'm only tilting this so you can see it. I don't want all these beautiful wall planters just tumbling on the table. But I'm going to just fold this over a tiny bit more. So this bit here, okay, this bit here is going to need a little mark. So I'm just going to take my stick and I'm going to use the lazy stick, you know, lying on its side, not like this, because it'll cut. And I'm just going to make a little mark 
where it's this bit is touching this bit. When I open it up, you'll understand what I mean. Okay, so I have left a little mark. I'm hoping you can see that here. Okay, this little curve is the bit this one was touching. Okay, so this bit here is where it's going to join. So I'm going to take my stick and I'm going to carefully create a cross hatch effect. Now I am using the cutting stick because I'm cutting in, but I don't want to cut all the way through. There's my lines, okay, to show uh, where it's going to join. And now what I'm going to do is cross hatch. Now when we're going to cross hatch, we're going to put lines the opposite way. Okay, so hopefully you can see that I've got a crossy pattern. On the other side, it has left a bit of an indentation. Okay, there's like a little, I'm going to mark it a little bit more. This is the bit, okay, that is going to touch this other bit. It's going to need cross hatch too. So I'm going to take my stick and I'm going to draw my lines. So they dig in a little bit, but not all the way through. That's important. So it's almost like a little bit more than when we wrote our name. And I'm going to go in the opposite direction. And it's going to create that cross hatch. Okay. Now sometimes cross hatching is very, very neat. And clay really prefers a very rough um, surface to join on. So I'm just going to go and do an extra bit of crazy cross hatching just to really open that side up. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just going to do a little bit of crazy cross hatching so that it's really, really, really open. Okay, all these open bits of clay are going to want to zip together with all these open bits of clay. And that's how the clay will stick together. It needs a little bit of glue. And for that, I'm going to use a little bit of the water that I got you to put into this container. Okay, and we can often use slip, which is just clay and water. But if we've created a lot of cross hatching and then we add water to that cross hatching, they blend together and make their own slip as long as we've done a lot of cross hatching. Okay, so I'm going to use one of my brushes. I've given you a fine brush, <coughs> which we used earlier for the end of that, uh, for drawing around our circle. So there's my finer brush and a broad brush. These are your two um, types of brushes for today. I'm going to use my broad brush because it'll make it quicker. I'm just going to dip it into the water a little bit, shake off some of the excess and just dab it on. I don't want to brush it on because then that'll close up all these lovely cross hatches. I'm dipping it in again and doing the other side and dabbing it. Because it's lifting up, you find a lot of the water will roll off. But as long as we've made it nice and damp, it'll look a little bit less neat. You've You will create your slip. Now your slip will be created when you push them together. And then the cross hatches from this side and the cross hatches from this side will be pressed together. Okay, And then they will lock together. If we just set them together, they might look as if they've joined, but they're not actually. Okay, The only thing that's holding is maybe a little bit of the water. And then they can easily peel apart. So what we have to do is when we bring these together, we give them a little press so that we're sure that they really lock together. So I'm going to carefully lift this bit up, okay? Place it where I need it to go. And when I'm happy with the placing, that feels like that's about the right position. I'm gonna give it a little press. You'll hear a little bit of squelching where the water and um, the cross hatching are joining together and the water's maybe bubbling and being pressed out a little bit. I'm giving this a little press. So I don't really want to mess my pattern up too much, but this is the area that we're going to be putting on our little flowers. Okay, so it doesn't really matter terribly on this part of the cross hatching. Okay, because this bit that we're really pushing in, remember the cross hatchings underneath, we're really pressing those bits of cross hatching together, but those bits will be uh, covered over with the lovely flowers. And you can press a little bit from the center, from this, sorry, from this seam towards the center just to get all those cross hatches joined. Okay, now we wanna make sure we haven't lost our shape. So I'm just going to make sure that I release it from the, the board, okay? And I've still got a nice shape, just repositioning that. What I like to see is I like to see that my center here, where the hole is, is actually in the center of the, uh, the actual wrap. So you might need to tilt your wrap a little bit so that it looks like it's completely in the center and not like, whoa, okay, you see this one? It's a little bit off, okay? So I just position it so that I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's my lovely shape. All right, I'm actually gonna firm that up a little bit because I want to put these little flower buttons on here and they might put a lot of 
like uh, pressure when we're joining them onto this and we might create that crack. So what I want to do is I want to firm up the clay a little bit. OK, I can see mine's collapsing just a little bit, but I'm going to start hair drying it. If you want this to be a little bit more open, let's bring it around so you can see, see how it's flattened down a little bit. When I'm hair drying it, I might even slide in this decorating sponge. So you've got this other little sponge. This is for sponging on some color in a little while. So what I do is I squeeze the sides and I might just pop that in just to give it that tiny bit more of a lift. OK, now the hair dryer, you can put it on a not too hot setting if you're going to hair dry it yourself or if um, you've got a grown up helping you. Then they can go ahead and give it a little blast with the hair dryer on hot. We only want to firm it up a little bit. The clay should not change color. OK, if it changes color, it's starting to dry out a little bit and look a bit like the chalky marks that have dried out on uh, on my board. We don't want the clay to go to that stage because we still want to join on and we need the clay slightly um, uh, softer than bone dry, okay? So we're definitely not bone dry on the hair dryers. We're just giving a quick blast. So I'm going to put my hair dryer on and give you an idea of how much time I'm hair drying for. And I'll show you that I've taken away some of this flexibility, okay? So this, I just really want to firm this up. So I'm going to, pop on my hair dryer so if you um, want to get your hair dryer set blast for a little bit okay and then when you see me putting down the hair dryer I'd like you to uh, stop your hair dryers and check yours obviously if you need to continue drying yours a little bit more and obviously you've got two to hair dryer if you're working with somebody else and um, it might take a little bit longer but it just gives you an idea of how much time you need to hair dry these for okay Okay, so I'm going to stop there. This little bit went flying out because I was trying to hair dry in there. But you will see that even with this little bit flying out, it's supporting itself. Okay, so that's where we want to get to. It is a little bit flexible, okay, especially on this back board because that bit hasn't really dried a lot. I did try and hair dry a little bit, but that is that's a good state of drying. There's still a bit of movement in the clay, but it hasn't gone bone dry. Okay, so there we go. OK, so what I want to do is I want to make the little flower, you know, the little flower uh, decorative elements. Now, you've got two options for this. OK, and you can share them and you don't have to have just all the same on one. You can and all the same on the other. You can mix those just like we did with the lace patterns. OK, so I'm going to set that to one side for a little bit leaving this nice wet bit to dry out so hopefully some of that water will go into another part of the board and i'm going to just keep my hands nice and damp and i'm going to get a little bit of the extra clay that we um had left over from when we cut our circle so these are my extra bits i'll set them on the damp bit for a minute and i'm going to get the two little bits of pottery that are in your clay crate okay these are called sprigs and they are little mini molds They've been made out of the same clay that we are using. So our clay, when it's fired, because these are now pottery, they've gone into the kiln, which is my oven, heated up to a thousand degrees, and now they're pottery. So they'll never be clay again. 
okay? And they are the absorbent kind of pottery, okay? So if I put a little bit of water on them, it won't roll off like a cup, okay? So a cup and a bowl sort of hold water. You can see with this, the water just gets sucked in, okay? This is the first form of pottery, okay? This is when your pieces are fired once, this will be the state that they're in, okay? It's called bisque or biscuit pottery, okay? So because they absorb a little bit of water, it means that we can press a little bit of clay into this indentation. It'll absorb a little bit of the water and then we can get the clay out again, okay? But it'll be in the shape that's been pressed in the middle. So damp hands, little bit of your soft clay, and you're going to roll that little bit into a ball, okay? Now, because it's a small piece of clay, it dries out very quickly, which is why I kept it on this damp bit and why I keep dampening my hands, center of my palm and my fingers. These are the bits that are rolling it, okay? So that's quite a large bead there, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into the larger mold. I set it right in the center. Now, this has been taken from a little brooch and it had some extra little bits of metal around the edges and I don't really like them. I only want that center bit. So sometimes when I press it out, I get all these extra bits, okay? So what I try and do is keep a bead kind of roundish and don't try and press it out too far, okay? So I press it in, but you see it's trying to stay within that center bit and not touch the edges. Obviously, if I smush it out towards the edges, it's going to get all these bits and I don't really want that. So it's a little round ball that's just pressed in the center and it's just left, okay? We'll leave that for a few minutes. I'm going to do the other one. I'm going to dump on my hands again. I'm going to take a little nip of clay. Now this one is tiny. So what I want to do is I want to roll. Okay, and I'm going to actually take another little bit away because it's just too big. Okay, I'm going to roll again in my nice damp palm. This keeps the clay nice and moist, remember? And then I'm going to see if this is going to fit in. Okay, that looks good. You see that's just a very small amount. I'm going to press it in. Remember, I'm not going to squash down the sides. I want it to stay sort of rounded on the edges, if that makes sense. I'm gonna do a bad one in a minute so you can see what not to do. But this one's ready and this one's ready. They've sat there for just a little while. I'm gonna take an extra little bit of clay, make another bead, maybe a slightly bigger bit. And this is going to be our little tool for pulling these pieces of clay out. So I make a ball, I roll it a little bit longer on my finger, with my finger rather in my pan. So it's like a little, little grabber okay and it just goes on the clay on the edge and it grabs it out and it leaves you with this lovely little flower okay so that's one done okay let's use our grabber for the other one okay and that's the second one done okay so these are the two different shapes that we've got now you can continue to use these as many times as you want, but they do get a little bit damp because remember they're absorbing all the water from the um, from the clay that we pressed in. So what you might find is that after a little while they're harder to get out. And what I suggest then is take it to your hairdryer and give it a little blast without any clay in it, and that will evaporate all the water that's just been absorbed into this pottery. Okay, your biscuit pottery. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to show you how to do it wrong, and then I'm going to do another one and show you how to do it right. Okay, so it's a bead of clay that is rolled in my palm, nice wet palm, okay, that sort of kind of just fits, okay. If I press it in, it just squashes out into a circle and stays nice and round, okay. Leave it for a few minutes. I'm just going to take this one out. Let's see. Let's give another little press. Just using my grabber. If your grabber just doesn't grab enough, a little bit of water from your cloth will make the grabber damp and it'll just grab onto that and pull it out. Okay, so you can see I've got another one. So they're the good ones. A bad one would be using too much clay. Okay, so you would start off with maybe use all of this up so you can see. Okay, that's way too much. Okay, it's way too much. You know it just needs to be a little tiny bead that fits inside okay if you've got this big massive bit and you press it it's just too massive and it gets all these extra bits okay if i squish it out around the edges i've got all these loose bits if i try and get this off with my grabber it's harder to get off but look i've got a lovely circle but now i have to cut around that i mean i've got a lovely flower but i'm gonna have to cut all the way around that so if you do a bad one this grabber wants to grab on for good you can just, and you still want to use it, you can still 
just get your stick, set the little flower down on the table and you can draw around the flower and cut. Now it's a bit fiddly, so you might find it's easier just to make a better one, okay? And I'm gonna do this one anyway so you can see. Okay, so I'm drawing around it. So this is if you get a bit with extra or you get a bit that you've just way too much. Okay, even a little bit of extra needs to be trimmed away if you want just the flower, okay? If you don't mind the extra bit, that's fine. So when you cut it out, it's quite thick, okay? And it doesn't have this nice rounded flowery edge to it, okay? But if you get extra and you just think, oh, I'm gonna use it, that's, that's what you'll do. You'll cut around it, okay? So if you've got this one and you think, oh, I really want to see those lovely petals, they're a bit too roundy. What you can do is you can take your stick and you can press it in. Okay, so there's my petal there and I press it in. So it's making a little indent. If I show you on the back, it's kind of a little indent that it's making. So I just do that all the way around. You don't have to do this if you just want them as little circle buttons with the flower imprint on them. You can, but this is just how to draw out the petals a little bit more. Okay, so you're not seeing any bits of clay between those petals. The same can be done for the other little one, but it's really fiddly. Okay, can you see how tiny that one is? So I don't mind one bit in the least which way you want to do your flowers. Hopefully you can see these fiddly bits. I'm just pressing it where the petal with indent in, and I'm using the side of the stick, and I'm just setting it in like that. And I've got this little flower, okay? So I'm gonna leave them for a little minute. I've got the, I think maybe I'll just use these three. Maybe I'll indent this one very quickly. I do it when I'm holding it, just so that I can turn it rather than doing it on the table. I just find it easier but it's up to you. Okay, so there's my three little flowers. I'm gonna join those on. I've got a little bit extra. I'm just gonna use my needle to take that one away. Get rid of these for a minute. Okay, so I'm leaving those three little flowers. It's up to you. You can have lots of flowers. I'll show you all the different places you can put them on in a little minute. But before we join them on, I just want them to firm up a little bit so that when I'm cross hatching the back, I don't lose the lovely shape. And while I'm waiting for those to dry, what I can do is I can put a little bit of color on this actual uh, planter okay and I'd love to use this broad brush okay I'm going to get rid of some of that water dry it off on my damp cloth okay and I'm going to talk to you about colors okay so in your little color tubs you've got a white and a yellow they're really easy to identify because one is lovely and pure white and the other one is not it might look a little bit grayish and sometimes I might have water floating on the top I'm going to pour this water off so you can see Okay, it's just a few drops of water, okay? If there's just water on top, if it's been sitting for a while, it tends to, so this is the slip, so it's clay and water. Um, the water tends to rise to the top and the heavy clay settles. So you can pour off the water or you can mix it through, okay? So I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna give it a good stir. So you can, if you don't wanna draw the water off and you just wanna stir, you go for that. Because sometimes when you're drawing the water off, you pour the whole thing away. You don't wanna do that. So that's our yellow. Okay, it's the one that's not white. Okay, and it's becoming a little bit more yellow when I've taken away that, that layer of water on the top. Okay, I'm gonna keep that for my center of my flower. So I'm just gonna wipe that and brush. I'm gonna leave that. I want to keep the white for the whole thing. Okay, so again, there might be a bit of water on top. And I'm gonna use the broad brush and I'm going to just stir this through. Okay, so these colors, when fired, will become a little bit zingier if it's yellow and it will become this nice zingy yellow this is the color of our clay okay so any bits that don't have color on them will become this lower bit that my finger's touching this is the lovely yellow and the white is very similar to the clay color okay so this is the pure white and this is the sort of creamy white of our clay so I want to show you different ways of adding your color on I sometimes do a dry brush effect which is dipping into my paint and trailing it off a little bit so that my paintbrush is really not very loaded. And I really lightly brush over the surface. And what it does is it tends to highlight some of the pattern. So I'm using a little bit of cream and a little bit of white as my color. 
Okay, so I'm going to try that again. I'm going to dip it in. I'm going to scrape a bit off so that my brush just it looks messy, but it's not loaded with color. And then I just sort of hold the brush on the side and I just very lightly touch the pottery or the, the clay and it will leave that lovely splodge of slip on the raised parts. Okay, so on our lace pattern, they're the bits that rise up. Or you can go for a sponging effect. So that's where that little sponge from earlier was used. Okay. So if you want more of a white, you want a really white, 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 intense white. Okay. You can just dip your sponge in. Okay. Again, I'm going to just dab it just so that it's not dribbly. And I'm going to, I think I'll try this sponge effect on the top so that I've got a combination of techniques for you to see. So that's my, my uh, dry brushing. Okay, the brush was drier. Okay, it wasn't loaded with color. And maybe the sponging I'm going to do on the edges and a little bit on the inside. Okay, you don't obviously see this when it's planted up a lot, but at the beginning you might see it, but that might be important to you to get a bit of color on. So obviously this can be over the whole thing as well. So this is my sponging. I'm going to sponge the edges so they become nice and white. And I'm going to do a little bit of sponging on the inside. Now your support sponge is going to stay there. OK, if you need to take it out while you're painting, you have to make sure that it's holding its shape. If it sags a bit, you must leave this in. If you're, you know, if you're decorating and it sags, you need to hair dry it a little bit more because it shouldn't be sagging at this stage. OK, I'm going to draw the water off. Sorry, draw the porcelain off the sponge. And sponge a little bit in there. OK, so when I first put my little plant in there and it's maybe not in full bloom, I'll see a little bit of white in the background. So I'm going to just sponge a little bit over here as well. I do love it when I can see a little bit of that cream clay, but I'm just going to go for a little bit of overall sponging. I still have got a nice highlight from the dry brushing. I'm going to pop this sponge back in again. It's really important that that sponge stays there. Okay. And I'll turn around and show you my color techniques. Okay. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay, you've got your white and your cream. So it's very, very natural. At this stage, these have probably sat long enough. They're tiny little bits and they're ready to be stuck on. Okay, I'm going to get the clay off the end of my stick. I really want the sharp point of my stick nice and clean. And I'm deciding where these guys are going to go. Okay, so it is entirely up to you. Okay, I've put some of mine along here and it as I said, it really helps to disguise if you squash the pattern a little bit when we were doing the cross hatching. But if you love doing these flowers and you want to do loads of them, well, you can have them all the way up here and all the way up here, if you like. You know, if you really love them that much and you think, you know what, this bit here would be amazing with a couple of flowers up here, you could do that as well. Just touch my lovely wet slip. Okay, so if you wanted little stud flowers up there, why not? Okay, um, as I say, when you first plant it up, it might just be reaching up about here, and you might see the top. You might want them all along the edge here. It is up to you. It depends on how much you love making the sprigs. Okay, so we know how to join these on. We've done this before. So even if it's tiny, like these little uh, flower studs, they need cross hatching and a little bit of water to create the slip. Okay, so I'm going to take this little flower off. I'm going to do X marks the spot. Okay, so that creates my first X. Now remember, if you really scrape it, it creates more of an open area for the clay to grip. So I really script, 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 script. The back, I'm going to do an X. X marks the spot where I want it to join. And then I'm really going to go and scratch that nice and deep. Okay, so you know to get a bit of a deep scratch, you use the point straight down. Obviously, I'm trying not to cut all the way through. Okay, and then we're going to use a little bit of water. My water here, I'm just going to dab a little bit on there. Dab a little bit on here. Okay, remember not brushing backwards and forwards because that'll close up your cross hatching. And then we just press it into place. Okay, so hopefully this is strong enough now that you can do a little bit of pressure. You know, when I took my sponge away, I know this is a good strong form. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that again in case you want me to just show you one more time. Okay, or if you didn't see that last bit, I'm going to take this little tiny one off. Okay, this is a teensy weensy tiny one. So the X is a little bit smaller, and then I really scrape. There's really not a lot of area to scrape, but I really want this to stay. So I make sure I cross hatch deep. 
X marks the spot on the back of the flower and our scrape, 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 scrape. Okay, next bit is a little bit of water. It's dabbed on. And I press that into place and hopefully if we just do it nice and delicately and we've left them to dry a little bit, you shouldn't have lost your shape. One last one to go. I think that's going to sit lovely right in that pattern there. So there's my X marks the spot and I do a lot of scraping. Take away any clay off your stick if you need to so that you're really doing a good job of scraping. And the back of my little flower, X marks the spot. And scratch, 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 scratch. Okay, a little bit of water from our water tub. Dabbed on. And the last little flower for me gets pressed on. So you guys can just decide how many flowers, where they're going. Okay, and once they're done, I'd love a little bit of colour on those. I find the easiest way to get it around all the bits of the petals is sponging again. I want little white daisies. Okay, so it's obviously it's easy for me to sponge on the white because it doesn't matter if it touches around here. If you wanted yellow petal flowers, you would probably be better off just dabbing with this paintbrush. So we'll do a little bit of that for both. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of white. I'm going to remove it so it's not too heavy. And I'm going to sponge all the way over this flower. Okay, let's see if you can see that. So I'm going to do the bottom. So the big flowers are going to be white and the center one's going to be yellow. So I'm going to dab, 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 dab. And if I want a second coat, dip in, trail it off so it's not too drippy. And I sponge on. Now, because this is clay, it does have a thickness. So if you put it on too thick, you might cover over some of the details of your um of your petals okay so do be careful that you just put a light coat on let it dry in and put another light coat on rather than just loading loads of slip on okay i would love to try the yellow with the finer paintbrush okay and i'm just going to dip into my yellow and i'm just going to dab that on okay so i'm not brushing backwards and forwards because that might lift the color of the clay i'm just dipping in making sure i haven't got too much and i'm dabbing here, I've left the center um, without color and I think I might even try and get a little bit of white in there. Maybe to do that, I would use the bottom of my stick, okay? So I would use that as a bit of a paintbrush. So I'm dipping it in my white and I'm going to try and put it in the center. Okay, that's that one done. And then maybe for the white ones, I might want yellow in the center. Like I've done with the fired example. So I'm just going to use the paintbrush and dab that in the middle. Okay, so I have my colors on, my flowers on, my name's already on the back, and I've got the hanging hole already. So I am now completely finished. Now, I would love these to sit for a little while to firm up before you put them away back into the clay crate. This little mini crate inside your crate is the perfect little place for them to go. But when you put the lid down, it stops the drying process, okay? And sometimes, like the ball of clay in our bag from earlier, they sweat a little bit. If this sweats a lot, it can just start to collapse on us, okay? So these are better to dry out for a little bit. Now you can just take the hair dryer and blast it a little bit more or just leave it with the lid open for a little while, okay? So either give it a blast with the hair dryer to take all that sticky away, okay? My, mine is sort of drying up a little bit or you can, so you can hair dry it or lift it up, pop it in your, your mini crate. Now you should get two in there. Okay, if one goes that way, I'll use one of these fired examples. The other one should go like that. Okay, they will need to be left open if you haven't hair dried it, just so that when you, you know, so they dry up a little bit, so that when you close over, what you're doing is you're creating a little damp cupboard. Okay, and I don't really want these to stay too damp. Okay, once the hair dried, certainly put the lid on top. All right, I might even put a little bit of bubble wrap in that you can just divide them in case you think they're going to rattle around a little bit but because they're quite flat on the bottom they should be fine okay so once they're hair dried a little bit more the lid can go on or left to dry out naturally and that can go back into your clay crate okay 
Now it's important that you give me back all of your scraps in this bag, okay? This bag I use lots. Okay? These are really nice strong clay bags. So you can put your scraps in there, okay? And if you just red tag it, this little red tag, not a keep them. Yeah, okay, so that's your scraps, I'll have that back. If you put the lids on your colour, now we haven't really used a lot of colour, so I can just get you to lid those, you don't need to wash those out. But if you wouldn't mind just washing some of the mess off your sponge and your paintbrushes, even if you just pop them into your water container, give them a little swirl around. All of these will be sanitised when they come back, but it's so nice that they're not covered in clay because it leaves a bit of a mess. Okay, so I'll just give those a squeeze out. Just give them a little wipe. Okay. And then I'm just going to pour this out. That will dry over. Okay. So I can put my colours in there and my sponge in there. My paintbrushes and my stick can go in my clay crate my board if you can just take your damp cloth and just wipe over that okay they don't like to be soaked these boards and again they'll be sanitized when they come back but again it's so much easier if i can just sanitize them and i don't have to worry about the clay on them because it does dry out a lot okay your rolling pin shouldn't be too messy but if you feel like it needs a little rub over you can do that you know i didn't discuss this i've just found this and I didn't even show you what this was for. So what it was for is for just pressing in, creating pattern, okay? So if you, if you had a little bead and you want to create your own flower, okay, you would take that and press it on top and it creates this little flower, okay? And that can be joined on. Um, alternatively, that was really good just, just for pressing in. If you fancy a little pattern somewhere, you can press that in. But as I've added these, these two, these were my favourites. So I think you'll be happy with those. But if you find that and you think, oh, I really like one or two of those on, then certainly go for a bead, press it in. If you press it in when it's on the table, you'll find that that'll flatten down a bit. Okay, and the bead can be even smaller than that if you want. Remember, anything you're gonna join on, cross, hatch and slip. Okay, so if you've got to the end of your making and you've just discovered this, don't worry, okay? If you've watched the video first and then you've made, then you can go ahead and use that, okay? So all of those little bits and pieces can go back into your, um, your clay crate, okay? Um, all of it should go, this, this is the most important, so that can go first, okay? And that keeps nice and flat and level in your clay crate, like that. And then your rolling pin, your board, your guides, they can go, I'm putting my colours in on top of that. Then your rolling pin, your guides in your tote bag can go right on top, okay? So the pieces of work that we just made are really safe at the bottom and everything else can fit in there. That just means that if we, um, when you're finishing, you leave that outside on your doorstep, even if it rains, the boards won't get wet and the work is safe, okay? So I think that's everything that I have covered. I hope you had or are going to have amazing fun doing the, um, the little planters, okay? So the hole in the top, I put a little bit of ribbon on just for to show you, but I find that if you have a nail in, um, I'm looking at my garden, if you have a, a nail on a, on a head, on a fence, that this can just slot in there, okay? And hold really, really well. And because it's nice and flat, it rests against that, okay? But if you, I'm gonna put in the ribbon anyway. If you want the ribbon, just because it looks decorative, you can add that on and hook it up, okay? So they will be fired up to 1,120 degrees with a nice bit of a shiny glaze on them. And they will be perfect for the summer, okay? They are not stoneware. So stoneware is a really, really high temperature, but it changes your colors a little bit. And I would recommend you bring these in over the winter because they can absorb a little bit of water. And then that, if it frosts, can expand and crack little bits of your pottery off. I have got little bits of this kind of pottery in my garden for a good 10 years before I've noticed any um, bits blistering because I was too lazy to bring them in. But if you want to keep it for forever, you can bring it in um, in the winter in the worst of the, the weather and then put it out in spring again. OK, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've had fun. And it normally takes about a week for them to get back to you. 
all right so then you can um, plant them up and maybe share some of the photographs with the island art center team thanks again and hopefully i'll see you again take care bye